Hello everybody, my name is Khaled Siddiqui and in today's video I'm going to teach you how to repair or convert an HME BAT50 battery. Um, you can repair it, increase its capacity or convert it to a USB powered battery pack. More like a dummy battery with a little pigtail wire hanging out with a USB cable so you can use a battery bank. These uh, batteries, they have most batteries, not just this, like, like this battery too, all of them. They have a smart chip inside uh, that only works, uh, especially the HME batteries, uh, only the original one works with that headset. You cannot have a, a aftermarket battery uh, on the HME uh, uh, headsets that are HS61006200, 6300, uh, and also the ones from Clearcom, um, you know, HS, uh, actually it's wireless headset uh, 210, uh, 220, and so on. So, having that said, now I'm going to teach you what you need to know. These batteries are expensive, they're anywhere between 40 to sixty dollars depending on the capacity so if you can fix it repair it with a five dollar cell why not well, let's get started and see how this is done so the battery is glued together it has an upper shell and lower shell and it's simply glued together what you need to do is you need to use a fine uh, uh, blade and start cutting very carefully very carefully you can't do this too you can't go too deep because you will damage the cell and if you go too deep here you will damage the board so you have to do very carefully like one at a time one line at a time make sure your blade is sharp this isn't even sharp so what I need to do is I need to cut it like that these you can get from the 99 cent store, by the way. These are very easily available. Okay, This area is empty up to here. So up to here, your blade can go in, no problem. This is where the battery body starts. Now I'm not going to go deep in, in there because I don't need to, but if I if my blade goes in, it's okay see right there my blade went in it's okay because there's no battery there in that area very carefully not to go deep you cannot go deep see I'm almost there see that almost there now that's also glued here in the center so be careful not to break you cannot damage the shell because you will be closing this again so it's easy to to be rough and break it but Okay, so there is my battery. This cell is what goes bad, usually. 99% of the time it swells or it goes bad. The chemicals are inside this. The electronics right here is usually not the problem. So if I were to take this cell out of this battery, which by the way is higher amperage, I could simply put it there you have to take the control board out remember you can only use the cell not the control board control boards are different for each device only the cell the 3.7 volt cell is the same on all of them as long as they're uh, lithium ion or nickel mid nickel metal hydrate or um, uh, nickel pol uh, lithium polymer um, you know all kinds of different uh, uh, 
uh, batteries. So now let's separate this from the housing. Okay, so the battery is separated. See, this is the glue and this is the glue. There are dots of glue that attaches to here and here. This is just an empty shell like this, an empty shell, which you could glue back together. Now, I, I didn't have a very good and sharp uh, cut, but if you have a sharp cut, even if you're a little, not straight cut, if it's a little uh, like a crooked, you don't have to worry because it's the exact match for the bottom one. So, you know, it's gonna fit perfectly because it's the same shell. Okay, so now you could use any battery. Now I'm going to show you, for example, how cheap the cells are once you remove this. This is negative, the whole body is positive. To be 100% sure, I'm going to show you this with a multimeter. It's very important to know which is positive, which is negative, because that is not written there. Let me zoom out. You go to DC voltage. Okay. So one goes here. The whole body is attached to here, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so as you can see, the body is negative. This is a dead battery, so it's only 1.2 volt. Normally, it should be 3.7 volt. So, so we will write body is positive. This right here, I'm going to use a black marker for negative. Negative. So what does that mean? That means that here on the board, this one is negative and this one is positive like this let me go back on the top camera on the board this is plus this is minus okay so now we will cut those You can even use scissors. It's a very, very thin uh, film. Uh, I mean, uh, not a film, it's a pl uh, thin metal strip. Very thin metal strip. You could cut it. Plus, minus. This, this cell must be disposed of properly. This cannot go to the, in the garbage bin. You must use tape to cover the terminals, both terminals. And then you must use a static bag. Each individual battery needs to be in a static bag, needs to be sealed, and needs to be sent to the lithium ion battery recycling centers. Or they have drop off locations, you can see that. Okay, now this is what we are left with. Uh, if you notice right here, let me get a little needle. Right here, there's a little plastic piece that uh, holds this board from falling down, from, from being pushed in. So basically, if I were to put this board back in without the, without, uh, the cell, it's not gonna fall. It's gonna be in place, not gonna fall. All right, so now there you have two options. You, one option is to buy a cheap cell and use plus and minus. This, for example, this cell, if I were to use this cell, here's what I would do. I would cut this off, get rid of this control board, because this control board is for a Canon camera. I don't need that control board. I 
can see the cable right here there one and two so this is my plus and minus for this battery let's see what is plus and minus we need to be very careful here it says plus and minus so it's it should be plus this should be minus but it's always good to test always a good habit to test Three point seven volt, and yes, plus is on the right. So I'm gonna write plus here and minus here, and I can simply attach this control board, spot weld it to this, and it will work in an HME battery, and it will even fit without a problem. There, it fits without a problem. You can close the top. Where did I put the top? There it is. You can pl close the top perfectly. Let me put this correctly and I will show you. Let's see, plus and minus. I have a spot welder so I can easily spot weld this but if you don't you can use a regular soldering iron to attach this I'm, one of these terminals is actually the body of the battery so I'm gonna see which one is most likely the positive so this way I have enough space to do the spot welding and voila the body is the positive so it's much easier to do the spot welding and that's what I'm going to do so this is my plus Do not remove this board right here because this board well, is basically uh, protecting the components, the IC chips and what have you, from touching the battery. There's a lot of IC chips, let me show you. See the IC chip? All kinds of components. Very complex battery. This is a circuit, really, really complex circuit in there. Now, I'm going to use my spot welder. So as I said, I'm using a spot welder, which you might not have. Uh, but so you can use regular solder, but you have to be very quick with it because you can you're going to damage the battery if you're too slow. We're gonna make sure it's centered. It has to be centered. And this is where this guy is gonna be. Right here. I have metal metallic strap. Uh, or metal plate roll for battery welding which you can use if you don't have the correct one you could cut them this one was too thick so I cut it this is how thick it was I cut it uh, lengthwise to get two narrow strips and now I'm going to solder these or I should say weld these That was one powerful welding. That thing is not going anywhere. Let me lower the power. That thing was way too powerful. Make sure the battery that you're using is discharged. You can put a light bulb or something to discharge it.
for safety reasons. Okay, so this side is plus, this is minus, which means this should be welded this way. However, here's the thing. If you see right here, you have to desolder them from there and there and solder the new ones. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. I have a soldering iron, a Weller soldering iron, which I'm going to use. Before we use the soldering iron, we have to mark the negative. Which is this side. And the positive, which is this side, with red. The side where it says uh, P... Let me... To see... TP2 is positive. And the TP1 is negative. That's how you can tell. TP1 is negative, TP2 is positive. So we will remove this. We see where exactly this needs to be bent to be a perfect center. So it has to be bent right there. So we cut it right here and solder it right here. Let's put some solder in there. Don't forget this guy. Make sure that's negative. Yeah, that is negative. So this guy goes like this. So, what we need to do, you don't shorten that one, instead we remove this, put some solder in the tip of this, now you bend this. You bend it and you solder it. It's a little off center, so I have to redo it. It has to be exactly in the center, it cannot be off center. Now it's very good, nicely centered. Now I bend this this way, like that. That's how you bend it. And then you put it back inside the shell, like this. And uh, you close the battery. Okay, so make sure this is seated inside that slot I, sh I told you there are a couple of slots and let's put the top cover and voila we have a 60 
dollar battery or 40 depending on the milliampere's and we replaced it with a you know ten dollar battery which I'm gonna show you the link where you can get those batteries from and now let's test it it's a moment of truth I haven't glued the battery back together yet but okay so the battery is not charged I'm gonna charge it and try it again okay so this is after 30 minutes of charge I'm going to put this little microphone here so you can hear uh, the, the battery working headset one battery full lane one so the battery is full now we have to glue it glue it back together So we have to glue this together. Now this battery that I used for this operation, the name is uh, LI42B battery, which I'm going to show you where to get it from. And it's 1200 milliamperes. The original battery was 720 milliamperes. So you almost double the capacity the duration of the battery lasting but I have to admit that HME's uh, milliampere is act accurate but uh, aftermarket batteries usually overrate their batteries so this may not even be 1200 milliampere yeah HME they are very accurate they don't exaggerate uh, what the milliampere is okay so we are on Google let's go to eBay and let's search this battery and see how much we can get this battery for forty two B NP forty five. So let's choose NP NP forty five. This battery is six dollars. Six dollars and ninety nine cents. Ten times cheaper than getting a brand new Wichimi battery. So yeah, you, you you do the you do the math. Brand new HME battery is forty to sixty dollars. This is six dollars, and it does the same job as long as you use the same control board from HME. Okay, so that's how you replace the battery. Now I'm going to tell you something else that's that's even more interesting, and. The more interesting thing is that you can, believe it or not, power this headset, you can power this headset with a USB battery bank. USB battery bank can power this headset. How is that possible? You simply, just like, let me show it to you in a camera, you simply disconnect this battery and instead power the 5 volt USB here uh, but you have to scale it down uh, I'm gonna make another video about that you, you need a resistor because of, of a USB port has 5 volts this needs 3.7 volts so you have to use a resistor and a capacitor which I'm gonna make another video on that but you could literally power this from a USB port and then drill a little hole maybe on this edge which is a little bigger a little hole and you know take the USB cable out and make a dummy emergency battery in case you don't have a charge battery you put it in the headset and you could wear the little USB battery bank in your pocket and the wire will be coming out of the headset from right here the wire will be coming from right here down and going to your pocket to the battery bank so that's how you fix an expensive battery now this repairing batteries uh, HME battery that I just showed you is 50 bucks or you know whatever but there are batteries out there that cost hundred dollar hundred fifty dollar and uh, that's all you need to do just change the cells and keep the controller board and then you can choose any cell to any battery as long as the voltage is correct okay thank you for watching please make sure to like and subscribe